Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 8th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's diary, a little bit less technical than what we usually have, and it's really more about, well, how are we dealing with sort of that constant barrage of alerts that we are all seeing in our environment, whether they are coming from sensors, whether they are coming from news streams and the like. Well, um, the quick summary here is ignore most of them, and most of them you may safely ignore pretty much 99 plus percent of attacks that you are seeing in your logs day to day are probably not going to cause any damage and nothing that you really should waste any time on. So really dealing with these alerts is a lot about prioritization and really knowing which alerts matter. And well, the quick summary sort of in the headline here that today probably nobody is going to attack you. And in that spirit, let's talk about Google Chrome 86, which was released and of course fixes security vulnerabilities, 35 of them. But, well, don't get too excited by that number. The update will apply itself. Not really much you have to do in a couple days. Maybe double check that Google Chrome has been updated to 86. And yes, this affects all the different platforms from Windows over Mac OS to Linux. And yes, the open source version Chromium got its update as well. Not quite as straightforward is the Android update that Google also released. If you have a Google One phone or a Pixel phone from Google directly, then yes, just apply the update and get it over with. For other vendors, you may have to wait for them to release the particular version for your phone. But then again, nothing really to be too concerned about because most of the problems, security problems that I'm seeing with Android are not so much based on flaws in the operating system, but due to shady applications that are being installed by the user. And QNAP released an update for the help desk application that's typically installed by default on QNAP storage devices. The two vulnerabilities addressed here are CVE 2020-2506 as well as 2507. And as it says in QNAP's uh, security advisory, An improper access control vulnerability could allow attackers to obtain control of a QNAP device. Now, this help desk application is, well, as the name implies, kind of used to communicate uh, with a QNAP uh, if you need any help with your device. I'm not sure if you can uninstall uh, this application, but that's certainly something that you may want to try doing. However, updating this application is actually relatively straightforward and does not require you to reboot the device. So uh, this makes it a lot less disruptive uh, to apply uh, this particular update versus, for example, simple updating the entire QNAP operating system. And then we do have an interesting vulnerability discovered by researchers at GuardiCore that while it's probably nothing that you really have to worry about, uh, well, uh, would make a sort of good water cooler talk if you would still go to an office, but there is a water cooler. And probably if you do go to an office and there is a water cooler, you're supposed to socially distance, so you don't really get to talk to each other. But either way, uh, this sort of one of those vulnerabilities that Uh, Sounds really dangerous, uh, sounds really bad, but like I said, nothing that I think anybody should really worry about. The problem here is the communication between the remote that uh, Xfinity or Comcast delivers with its cable set-top boxes. Uh, This remote, uh, like uh, many remotes these days, has the ability to respond to voice commands. It also uses a fairly sophisticated protocol to communicate with the set-top box, meaning that there is a lot of functionality there. Now, usually the commands are in 
encrypted. And if uh, the remote sends an encrypted request, the response is supposed to be encrypted, but uh, the remote is not actually verifying this. So the vulnerability here is that periodically the remote will check if there is a firmware update. An attacker could now send an unencrypted response back and advertise a malicious firmware that is then being installed on the remote because the remote also does not really verify any signature on the firmware. So sounds bad because the malicious firmware then, of course, could be used to eavesdrop on the user. Well, uh, the reason I think this is really a non-issue is that, first of all, an attacker has to be close to the remote. Uh, this is an attack that uses the wireless protocol that is being used between the remote and the set-top box. Secondly, the remote will only ask for a firmware update once a day. So that's the time when the attack has to send back the malicious packet. Lastly, the entire update process takes about 20 minutes, as Guardi Core says in its blog post, and it tends to fail if there's even the slightest interference. So chances are that the attacker will actually have to try several times in order to get this to work. And as they say, their most consistent implementation has to take at least sort of around 35 minutes. So in other words, an attacker has to hang around your house for several hours in order to pull off uh, this attack. If you're that worried, then please don't use any devices with microphones in your house. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.